The Life of Hisashi Yamada, Present Mike, My Hero Academia. Hisashi Yamada, also known as Voice Hero Present Mike, or Present Mike, is a pro hero who is an English teacher at UA High School. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Hisashi Yamada. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background When Hisashi Yamada was born, his newborn cries damaged the ears of his parents and the doctor who delivered him. During his adolescent years, Hisashi attended Yue High, during his first year, he met Shota Aizawa and Oboro Shirakumo. They all become best friends and were called the Three Dumbigos of Class A. While picking their hero names, Shota was unable to decide, so Hisashi chose the name Eraserhead for him. During his second year, his friend Shota began to have doubts about his ability to become a hero. One day, Hisashi pointed out Shota's gloomy demeanor, arriving late and feeling powerless, and tried to cheer him up with bad jokes, with Oboro joining them minutes later. Class 2A's homeroom teacher begins class by reminding students that most second years do hero work studies during summer vacation. Hisashi, along with Oboro and Shota, were reminded that they have yet to assign themselves to an agency. Hisashi and the rest of his class geared up for joint exercises with Class 2B that consist of battle training, rescue training, and entertainment lessons. He excelled in each exercise. A few days later, Hisashi's teachers discussed if he has any chance of landing an agency. His homeroom teacher considered he shouldn't have problems because his voice quirk has implications in battle and entertainment, although he might be easily distracted and have trouble given a set role. They could easily see him take on more than one profession in the future. On one of the rooftops of UA, Hisashi was with his friends Shota and Oboro having lunch and discussing work studies. At the same time, they talk about what they should do with a cat that Oboro brought to school. The third-year student, Namuni Kayama, showed up to talk to them and ended up adopting the cat. That day, Hisashi was assigned to a battle-oriented agency, the Buster Union, coinciding with Sensoji, a student of Class 2B with whom Shota usually had problems. After a period of practices, all students returned momentarily to UA High School to show their progress in a two-on-two -two battle royale training. Hisashi noticed Shota had added Oboro's signature goggles to his costume, and Oboro jokes about it. Sensoji interrupted the conversation that they stole his eye-protecting idea. At Oboro's suggestion, the teacher ordered to team up prioritizing the partnership during the work studies. Hisashi protested because that means he had to team up with Sensoji, but the teacher ignored his complaints. The battle begins, and despite Hisashi's grumbles, he made a good combo with Sensoji, defeating their opponents without problems. At the end, the Sensoji-Hisashi team faces the Shota-Oboro team. Before the two duos went against each other, Sensoji demanded Shota to hand his goggles over if they lose. Oboro accepted and wagered their goggles against Hisashi and Sensoji's shades. Hisashi asks why he's included in the bet. Sensoji ordered Hisashi to stand back because he planned to defeat them alone, but thanks to their great teamwork, Shota and Oboro managed to defeat him, winning the team battle. The wagers called off by Shota causing Sensoji to storm off. Later, Hisashi was hanging out with Shota and Oboro with his new goggles to match the other two. Oboro talked about the future and suggested that, when the three go independent, they should start their own agency. Hisashi and Oboro would start the combat, and Shota would be the edge in battle to allow them the final blow. Shota told that he never agreed to a team-up with the two of them, which made both Oboro and Hisashi tease him and his broody act. A week later, the students returned to their respective agencies to continue with the work studies, and accordingly, Hisashi and Sensoji returned with the Buster Union. The team of heroes was notified that a villain known as Garvey was causing great destruction in the city, and the entire Buster Union team, including the two students, flocked to face him. Once there, the team leader ordered everyone to unleash the full power of their quirks. All of them fired powerful attacks at Garvey, but to their surprise, the villain absorbed all the attacks. Before they could react, the villain strikes back using their own attacks against them, with even greater power. The wave of energy swept a large area, and Hisashi and the entire Buster Union team was defeated. With them out of combat, the Purple Revolution Agency, of which his friends Shota and Oboro were part, fought against Garvey. In the end, Shota was able to defeat the villain alone, but at a terrible cost. Oboro Shirakumo died during the confrontation. Even after his body was removed from the area, Hisashi and Shota remained for hours contemplating the place where Oboro died, mourning over the loss of their dear friend. Oboro's death had a strong impact on both, but especially on Shota. While Hisashi could more or less overcome his loss, Shota was isolated, barely socializing with his classmates and training most of the time to improve his combat skills. 
Only Hizashi interacted with him and many times he saw with melancholy how Shota overtrained. Hizashi ended up graduating from UA and started his career as a pro hero. Vigilante's Beginnings Arc Months before he started working as a teacher at UA, Hizashi was involved in a series of events caused by a criminal organization known as the Villain Factory, a criminal organization responsible for trafficking Trigger, a drug that boosts a quirk but turns its consumers into violent instant villains. One day, one of the factory's agents, Kuin Hachisuka, uses her Queen Bee quirk to inject Trigger into innocent civilians, causing an instant villain outbreak. Detective Naomasa immediately calls for backup. Hizashi and other heroes appear immediately and quickly they suppress the outbreak. Versus Queen Bee Arc Weeks later, he's invited by Makoto to participate along with other heroes in a musical event organized by the Marukane. Present Mike, or Present Mike, accepts the invitation and acts as the announcer at the festival. After the introduction, he tells the audience that the evening portion will begin with the ensemble's Feather Hats performance. In the green room, he meets Midnight, who asks him where Eraserhead is. Present Mike replies that Shota told him he would come to the show if he can. Midnight assumes he won't come. Finally, Shota cannot attend because he has to face a villain that generates a blackout in the area. Fortunately, Makoto's team fixes the generators, and the festival continues, ending up being a success. Sky Egg Arc Months later, on the occasion of the return of Captain Celebrity to the USA, Makoto decides to organize a farewell show at the Tokyo Sky Egg, inviting several of Japan's most famous heroes to the event, including Present Mike. In the middle of the event, the Tokyo Sky Egg is attacked by creatures known as Bombers, commanded by the villain Number 6, a member of the Villain Factory. The main objective of Number 6 is to kill Captain Celebrity, and to achieve it, he orders the Bombers to damage his structure leaving Captain Celebrity at his mercy by having him use his strength to prevent the building from collapsing, leaving him completely defenseless to the bomber's attack. The heroes who were participating in the event decide to organize in two groups. One group goes outside and confronts the enemies, while another group helps the show staff to look after the spectators who had come to enjoy the show without telling them the truth about what's happening to avoid panic. Present Mike is part of this latter group. Thanks to the intervention of the heroes and the timely arrival of All Might, they manage to avoid a tragedy. School Days Arc Weeks after the Sky Egg bombing, Midnight phones Shota Aizawa to talk about her experience as a teacher at UA and tell him that Hizashi Yamada will start teaching next semester and the only one missing is him. Shota replies that he's not agreed to being a teacher, but Midnight replies that according to Present Mike, he only needs a good shove to take action. Although Shota is annoyed by Hizashi's comments and Nemori's insistence, after rethinking, he accepts the offer to be a teacher. Naruhata Lockdown Arc at UA High, Present Mike loudly shows up to Eraserhead and asks if they can go out to eat, but is turned down, with Eraser mentioning how he has been subbing for Midnight after she's stepped out temporarily. Present Mike pulls out an earbud and learns that Eraser has been listening to Naruhata news station and teases him for worrying about the situation down there, to which he denies. Present Mike continues teasing, saying that if he cares about his friends there so much, he should just babysit them, while Eraser responds, I'm not their teacher, amusing him. Entrance Exam Arc Present Mike first appears at UA High to introduce and explain the rules of the UA entrance exam to the candidates. He surprises the students when he returns to announce the practical exam's start and end. Following the practical exam, Ochako Oraraka tries to negotiate with him about transferring her exam points to Izuku Midoriya, who saved her life during the practical. Hizashi explains to her that Izuku doesn't need her points because he scored more than enough rescue points to pass himself. Battle Trial Arc Class 1A grudgingly endures the first literature class with Present Mike as he tries to keep them focused using his loud antics. USJ Arc Once the media finds out All Might is teaching at UA, they storm the school looking for a quote from the number one hero. They somehow bypass the school's defenses and get on the property, prompting the alarms to sound. Hizashi and Shota both try to get the media off the property, but they refuse to leave. Hizashi suggests they beat them up for trespassing, but Shota warns him to stand down and wait for the police to arrive. Present Mike arrives at the USJ with the other faculty members after Tenya Ida calls them to help save Class 1A from the assault by the League of Villains. He uses his quirk to subdue several of the villains and rescues Fumikage Tokoyami and Koji Koda. UA Sports Festival Arc 
present Mike X as the main commentator and announcer for the UA Sports Festival. He manages to talk to Shota into commentating alongside him. During the opening ceremony for the festival, Present Mike announces every class that's taking part one by one. After Midnight introduces herself as the chief referee, the obstacle race is announced to be the first event. Midnight explains the rule, and the event begins as Present Mike gives a play-by-play -play to the audience. Hisashi reveals the first obstacle will be a blockade of villain bots he nicknames the Robo Inferno. After Shoto Todoroki freezes a gigantic villain bot on his own, Present Mike commends him and reveals to the audience that he was the student let in on recommendations. Present Mike explains the second obstacle is the fall. Once the students reach it, if they fall, they're out. He mentions that it can be difficult to become a popular hero without a flashy quirk to tease Shota. He also comments on how easily Shoto is getting ahead and that Tenya looks foolish crossing the fall. Once Shoto reaches the third obstacle, the minefield, Present Mike explains that it's the final obstacle and the mines aren't that powerful. Present Mike continues giving a play-by-play -play of the race, including an excited take on Izuku's sudden pursuit of first place. He notices Shoto and Katsuki stop fighting to pursue Izuku and comments on how Shota's students are amazing. When Shota credits them of their own will to succeed, Present Mike teases him by calling him a terrible instructor. To conclude the event, Present Mike announces Izuku Midoriya is the champion and asks the crowd to cheer for all the competitors as they prepare the results. Just as the cavalry battle is about to begin, Hisashi wakes up Shota in preparation for the battle royale. At the beginning, Present Mike comments on Team Mineta's clever use of Mezo's body to cover both Minoru and Suyu. He's excited to see Katsuki attack Team Midoriya in midair, but questions if leaving his team is even allowed in the event. When he decides to take a look at the rankings seven minutes into the event, Present Mike is surprised to see Class 1A isn't doing well. He announces the halfway point of the game and ponders what will transpire. When Team Todoroki freezes the other teams, Present Mike is impressed with Shota's comments on Shoto's strategy. With only a minute left in the battle, Present Mike comments that Team Midoriya has miraculously kept away from Team Todoroki for the latter half of the games. He's also taken by surprise when Tenya uses his Recipro Burst technique to steal Team Midoriya's points in an instant. Present Mike comments on all of the shakeups within the final minute, including Kotsky's merciless assault on Team Monoma. He announces the end of the second round and all four of the qualifying teams. Afterwards, he asks Shota to grab lunch with him, but he refuses so he can take a nap. Prior to the final round, Present Mike announces that those who didn't make it can enjoy the cheerleaders and recreational games. He and Shota are both surprised to see the girls of Class 1A are dressed like cheerleaders as well. He also explains that the finals will be a one-on-one -on -one fighting competition. When Nerengeki and Mashida drop out of the finals, Hisashi calls it a strange turn of events. Present Mike announces the beginning of the finals and introduces the first match between Izuku and Hitoshi Shinso. At the start of their bout, Present Mike comments on how Hitoshi immobilizes Izuku using their quirk. He's surprised to see how Izuku listens when Hitoshi commands him to walk out of bounds, and even more shocked when Izuku breaks his mind control. When Izuku throws Hitoshi out of bounds and wins the match, Present Mike says the match was kind of boring but still asks the audience to applaud both participants. He announces the next match and introduces both Hanta Sero and Shoto. He commends Hanta for his strong start but is silent and staring with awe after Shoto completely freezes Hanta along with half of the stadium. The battles resume after all the ice is removed and Present Mike introduces the next two competitors, Ibarra Shiozaki and Denki Kaminari. He introduces Ibarra as an assassin but she takes exception to this and questions why he did so. Present Mike apologizes and is annoyed when Ibarra starts monologuing over her own humbleness. She defeats Denki rather quickly prompting Present Mike to comment that it was over in an instant. He continues on to the next match between Tenya Ida and Mei Hatsume, but is dismayed when Mei turns the match into a commercial for her gadgets. He commentates during Mina's match with Yuga, Fumikage's battle with Momo, and Eijiro's fight with Tetsu Tetsu. He later mentions that Eijiro and Tetsu Tetsu's quirks are redundant, and even gives them the same introduction for their match. They fight to a draw, and while they recover, Present Mike announces the last match between Katsuki Bakugo and Ochako Radaka. During the final match of the first round, Present Mike makes it evident he's rooting for Ochako. He becomes concerned when Katsuki barrages her with explosions and agrees with the crowd when they start booing him for it. However, Shota takes it upon himself to hit Present Mike and reprimand the crowd for their negativity. Hisashi is surprised when Ochako reveals her strategy and drops floating debris from the sky. He's equally shocked when Katsuki blows it away with a super explosion. When the match ends, Present Mike calls the outcome depressing and announces that there will be a break between rounds. Before the second round's first match, Present Mike comments on the huge anticipation for the epic battle between frontrunners Izuku and Shoto. Present Mike announces their match closely, commentating on Izuku's counters against Shoto's ice. When Shoto unleashes his flames and Endeavor yells across the arena, Hisashi hesitantly comments about how much of a good father he is. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. The match concludes with a gigantic explosion that present my questions. Shota explains that the arena's air had been cooled then rapidly heated, prompting Hizashi to realize that it had caused the explosion. Hizashi continues to announce the rest of the second and third rounds leading up to the final matchup between Shoto and Katsuki. Shoto opens the match with another giant ice blast and questions whether the match is already over. However, Katsuki tunnels his way out of the ice and surprises Hizashi and the viewing crowd. He commends Shoto's use of an ice wave and mentions that it looks like fun. Come the battle's climax, present my comments on Katsuki's howitzer impact technique and that Shoto refused to use the fire blast he used to beat Izuku. Afterwards, Present Mike announces the conclusion of the UA Sports Festival versus Hero Killer Arc. In the faculty room, Hizashi and Shota are both annoyed by All Might's obnoxious ringtone. Final Exams Arc Present Mike attends a meeting with his fellow faculty members to discuss changing the final exams. He questions whether having the students fight teachers in pairs is a good idea because it may be difficult to grade them if they're easily defeated. He and the other teachers meet with the students prior to the practical exam so Principal Nezu can explain the change. He comments that it differs from combat training because the students will be up against superior fighters. Kyoko responds with confusion, claiming that Present Mike is just an announcer. This irritates him, and he yells for Kyoko to have some respect. Present Mike is placed against Kyoko Jiro and Koji Koda to drown out their sound-related quirks. Present Mike begins their battle guarding the escape gate and uses his loud quirk to blast the entire forested area with his voice. As he waits for them to draw closer to the escape gate, Present Mike continues to yell and flood the forest with his voice. Kyoka manages to counter one of his shouts with her own quirk, but Hizashi is unimpressed with her power. After yelling for them to come out for a few more moments, Present Mike notices bugs coming from underground where sound doesn't travel well. He's paralyzed with fear and allows the bugs to crawl up his leg, causing him to faint and allow Team Kyoka and Koji to pass through the escape gate. Forest Training Camp Arc Present Mike is later seen among UA teachers in an emergency meeting regarding the villain attack at the training camp and the capture of Katsuki Bakugo. Present Mike pointed out how the time of peace had made them soft and was the one to bring up the idea of a traitor in UA. He desired to find the identity of the traitor only for his theory to be dismissed by Midnight and Snipe. Remedial Course Arc Present Mike and Eraserhead Substitute All Might were assigned to monitor Shoto and Katsuki at the Provisional Hero License Course training. He explains that Shota is busy dealing with tasks related to UA High School. Shota inquires, causing Present Mike to explain that his quirk is needed to help the rescued girl, and for that reason, he asks him to come along as a bodyguard. All Might further comments that Present Mike's presence is a precaution in light of the League of Villains movements. Shoto, Katsuki, All Might, and Present Mike take the bus to the Provisional Hero License Training Center. All Might and Present Mike prepare to go and watch from the bleachers, but unexpectedly encounter a furious Endeavor who, although thanks All Might for looking after Shoto, demands a chat with the former number one hero. Seeing the situation so tense, Present Mike decides to buy coffee for all three. Gang Orca is in charge of training the students, and Present Mike is impressed by his aggressive drill instructor attitude. Gang Orca has prepared for Katsuki and Shoto, along with Inasa and Keimi from Shiketsu High School, a particular task for just the four of them, which is taking care of elementary school kids from Masagaki Primary School. The students from Masagaki are especially misbehaved, lacking any sort of discipline or respect, even for their teacher. The goal is for all four to learn to connect with people, but the students start their task poorly. After sitting on the bleachers silently for a while, Present Mike gets so bored he shrieks in agony, saying his DJ soul can't take it anymore. Present Mike decides to act as a commentator on the training to lighten up the mood with his commentating and All Might remarks that this is Present Mike's way of looking out for them, to which Endeavor doesn't respond. He begins to commentate on the situation with the bratty children as the kids give the students a hard time, commenting on how the kids make every student's attempt to win their hearts fail. Some of them start showing off their quirks, believing in their parents' words that their generation will be better. Katsuki is glad that the children are showing off their quirks and decides to take them all on while Hizashi Yamada is disappointed that the students in training are struggling with some mere school children. However, Hizashi didn't say it out loud because, you know, he has a conscience left in him. The children of Masagaki attack Katsuki, Inasa, Shoto, and Keimi with a variety of quirks. The present Mike is impressed at the children's efficiency with their quirk abilities, saying that at their age, he didn't have as much power as they did. Komari Ikoma, the teacher of the kids, apologizes for her students' violence, but before she can do anything, she's stopped by Present Mike telling her that now is their turn. It turns out that the four students are perfectly fine as they use their quirks respectively to stop the children's attacks. They then combine their quirk to win the hearts of the children by creating a playground for the children to play on, successfully winning over the kids and passing the task. 
When the provisional training hero course ends, Gang Orca congratulates the students, although without abandoning his aggressive attitude. Present Mike remarks that deep down, Gang Orca actually likes kids, and his behavior is mostly an act. Before returning to UA High School, he and All Might talk with the Shiketsu teacher about the two schools starting to work together in order to stop the League of Villains. Joint Training Arc After evaluating the performance of Hitoshi Shinso in the joint training battle, Shota presents his case for Hitoshi's transfer to the other faculty members and earns Nezu's approval. After the meeting, as they're walking down the hall, Present Mike notes the similarities between Hitoshi and Shota in his younger years, and asks if he's taken him as a pupil for that reason, although he also asks if he does it for Oboro Shirakumo. Shota requests that if he wants to say something he should keep it short, as Shota has somewhere to be. Hizashi evades the question saying that he was just reminiscing. Paranormal Liberation War Arc Hizashi and Shota are called to Tartarus after it was found that Kurogiri was a nomu created from their deceased friend, Oboro, shocking them both. Hizashi says he hopes it's a big misunderstanding. After the duo arrive at Tartarus, they meet up with Naomasa Tsukauchi and Gran Torino, who explain the situation to them. They explain that they failed trying to obtain information from Kurogiri, but they hope that due to their friendship with Oboro, both Hizashi and Shota can awaken the consciousness of their former friend from Kurogiri. Hizashi questions if it shouldn't be Oboro's family who does that, to which Naomasa says as they'll contact them if he and Shota fail. Shota uses his quirk on Kurogiri and says he'll be damned to let Oboro's parents learn of this stuff. When the investigation begins, Hizashi notes that the black fog doesn't vanish even when Shota looked at him, meaning Kurogiri's body is made of the black substance. Just as he starts, he immediately yells that their theory that he's Oboro is off mark. Kurogiri questions if Tomura is okay and if he got captured. Hizashi starts yelling that watching over him is a stupid job only to notice Shota's saddened expression. In their interview with Kurogiri, they try to get their old friend to remember who he used to be, with Shota breaking down into tears as he reminisces of all the kind things he did back when he was Oboro. The two eventually succeed in their efforts, with Oboro breaking through the mist and saying hospital before passing out. Hizashi expresses his concern towards Shota's eyes as he had used the erasure the whole time, while the latter says his eyes are just dry as he cries. After this, Hizashi and Shota return to UA while Naomasa reports to the Hero Public Safety Commission about the last clue obtained. Once in the teacher's dorms at Heights Alliance, Shota and Present Mike dejectedly talk about recent events. Shota expresses his distrust of the Hero Public Safety Commission, suggesting that they must know something's up, due to their insistence on students participating in work studies, something Hizashi agrees on. Shota changes the subject, asking Hizashi what he would do if they were to discover where the Nomu were being made. Hizashi angrily gives a sarcastic response before turning the question on Shota. Then they're interrupted by the Big Three to tell them that Eri is unwell. It's then the end of March. After hearing Kurogiri's clues and Hox's intel, the heroes plan for a raid, the war that will stop the Paranormal Liberation Front once and for all. Now Masa talks about the Jaku General Hospital, the hospital that Kurogiri was referring to since one of his undercover agents had found that its head doctor, Dr. Kyudai Garaki, is an ally of Tomura Shigaraki and managed to discreetly photograph him with a small nomu in a hospital area that only he can access. When the raid begins, Present Mike is one of the pro heroes participating in the raid of the Jaku General Hospital to find Kyudai and stop Tomura Shigaraki's surgery before he awakens. The heroes quickly encounter Dr. Garaki in the corridors of the hospital. Kyudai is aghast at the unexpected appearance of the heroes and tries to flee, but Eraserhead captures him with his capturing weapon and uses his erasure on him, proving Kyudai has a longevity quirk. Present Mike angrily demands he answer why he's using his powers for evil. Two doctors who are watching come in and push Present Mike away, wanting to know what it is he's done wrong. The heroes are escorting the two doctors away when suddenly several Nomu tear through the floor and kill Kyudai, who it turns out isn't the real doctor but a clone created with double. The real Kyudai Garaki is in his secret lab and releases a horde of Nomu to fight the heroes as he tries to wake up Tomura from his stasis. The hospital soon becomes a battlefield, with heroes and creatures fighting through hospital wards and corridors. Some heroes, however, manage to break into the secret lab. Kyudai awakens the high ends to fight them off while he evacuates the room. Present Mike and the other pro heroes fight the Nomu army, but one of the high ends, Woman, stabilizes and identifies his voice quirk, dodging his and several others' attacks with ease. Despite the high end's efforts, Mirko breaks into the room where Kyudai is overseeing Tomura's progress, causing heroes to advance. Present Mike and Eraserhead make it their mission to stop them both. As Present Mike goes on ahead, Eraserhead confidently tells him that he's counting on him. 
He sees Tomura's capsule and plans to break it. Kyudai tries to awaken Tomura with a remote, but Present Mike uses loud voice to break the capsule and all of the machinery in the lab. He thinks back to when Shota told him that he would follow him wherever he went, since he was still holding on to the dream that they and Oboro had back then, even though it seemed naive and a nightmare now. Present Mike uses DJ Punch on Gareki not only to find out if he's the real thing, but also as revenge for making his friend Shota cry. Present Mike drags Kyudai across the lab, demanding him to stop the Nomus. Kyudai tells him about society's rejection of his quirk singularity theory and how everyone hated the idea of a collapse for the future, to the point where he was ostracized and exiled until All for One accepted him. Kyudai reveals that the name of his longevity quirk is Life Force, and he gave it to All for One as an offering while keeping a copy of it for himself. As Present Mike begins to feel more and more disgust towards the doctor, Kyudai rhetorically asks him if he's a friend of Kurogiri, confessing that back then when his friend Oboro died, he actually wanted to get his hand on Shota Aizawa's erasure, leading Hizashi to resent him while he grins madly. Despite having previously verified that his heart wasn't beating, Tomura Shigaraki awakens. Seeing the situation, he immediately uses his decay, which spreads rapidly through the laboratory. While Hizashi is escorting Kyudai Garaki to the surface, they notice the lab start to disintegrate, with Kyudai smiling maniacally as it reached closer to the two of them. Gran Torino charges in and quickly grabs the two. The laboratory begins to crumble and the heroes try to flee as they can from the destruction. Thanks to Gran Torino, Hizashi manages to get to safety, but most of the heroes die because of the decay, which destroys the entire hospital, spreading to the city. An ecstatic Kyudai declares everything the heroes built will disintegrate with Tomura's hands, so this is their victory. Present Mike takes Kyudai Garaki to the nearest police force while the few surviving heroes face Tomura and a new batch of Nomu. All this happens while he listens to the old man praising Tomura's new power and his creatures. Once Garaki is arrested, Hizashi is informed of the situation by a policeman. Giganto Makia goes to where Tomura is, destroying everything in his way. Hearing this, Kyudai begins to brag and Hizashi listens with concern as the doctor boasts that the heroes have lost the battle. He also tells the police and present Mike that Giganto Makia is a calamity that lives and dies for the sake of his master. In fact, the Nomu were modeled after him. After leaving Kyudai Garaki in police custody, Hizashi runs back to the battlefield. Seeing Tomura Shigaraki under the control of All for One, escaping along with a few allies and several near high-end Nomus, Hizashi and other heroes try to stop them, but fail, and the villains manage to escape. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other My Hero Academia videos from the Imagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching, I'm Adrian, and I'm out.